I didn't know if it's what I could deal with at first, with him not, like the dad, not wanting to know. But then I just thought to myself, I could do it. If my friends can do it, then I can. And some of them are in the same situation. I was 10 weeks when I found out that I was pregnant. And then I told him from the start when I thought I might have been. And they just didn't want to know. I've got a lady um, who is a primary who's 39 and 3. Now, she's been in, um, this is a third episode of Reduced Movements. She's come in and the CTG looks lovely, but she's still not really had many movements today again. It's really strange how there's a little person alive in, and all that's between you is like your skin, and it's just, I find it weird. It, I can't come to terms with it, and I just can't imagine what it's going to be like seeing him for the first time. I can't bring myself to know what he's going to look like or anything. It's just exciting. I just want it to come now. Do you want to ring your partner and tell him what we're going to I'm do? I'm not with him. Are you not no. with him? OK. Can you... Are you a friend, then? Yeah. Can you get us some stuff brought my in? My mum would come My mum would be coming anyway. OK. Then. So don't panic. Go get you some water. Do you want some water? Are you all right? Thank you. Yeah, I expected her to be angry at me and disappointed, cos... I've, I knew that that's not what she wanted me to do, and I still went and did it. And I could see where she was coming from, and I've said that to her. At first, I told her that I didn't expect it to be over at moon, but I just wanted the support for it to actually just be there. Do you feel too old to be a grandma? Too old? Too young. <laughs> well, <laughs> too young then. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know about that, really. I just, I'm just more worried about how it's happened and how it's come about, and what's going to happen now, cos... Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, most people have another half, don't they? At least, a boyfriend. At least. <laughs> Even if you've got nothing else, you'd have a boyfriend. Not everybody. You're not with Dad. No, but I was when I had you. I just didn't want that for Leanne. Um, we, never met, we never met the guy, we don't know him. Um, so just another sad way it's come about. Because I think, again, I probably would have come to terms with things a little bit easier if I'd have thought it was somebody that we knew and somebody that Leanne had brought round and somebody that we'd known a while and it was just one of those things and it was an accident and all of those kinds of things. And I think you kind of can sort of justify things a little bit better. Um, but there's not been an awful lot to be able to justify. <laughs> I didn't know if it's what I could deal with at first, with him not, like the dad, not wanting to know. But then I just thought to myself, do it if my friends can do it, then I can, and some of them are in the same situation. In <laughs> done, thank you. Oh, I've got a hot spell now. I know it's, it's horrid. horrid, it's horrid. She knows what she wants, she wants it, she'll get it. That's it, that's the be all and end all of it. And obviously, when she told me she was pregnant, and I said, Yes, you will be fine because obviously she will be. She's a strong person, and I know for a fact she'd sell for it, which she has. I was 10 weeks when I found out that I was pregnant and then I told him from the start when I thought I might have been and they just didn't want to know. And he hadn't been bothered since. He had a way with words that made you feel so uh, like special and like he was the only girl he was bothered about and it turned out to be just not that at all. Nicky's just messaged me. Oh, Nikki. Saying. Leanne, dot, dot, dot. I'm sorry about not being there before, but you know I have wanted a baby and now I have one. I want to be a proper dad. I want to be there for him. I want to do it right. If you want, I will come see you tomorrow in hospital. Let me know, please. Tell my boy I love him. Tell my boy I love him. And you don't love him, you know, because you will see me in God knows how long. I just ignore him to be honest until you've finished it because it's just gonna, it's it's gonna bother you more now. Leanne, yeah, I suggest you put your phone down now because it's twenty to three and you've got to be up at seven o'clock. And I'm just replying. Nicky just BBM'd me. Huh? Nicky just BBM'd me. Going right. I've been thinking that we're having a baby. Don't this give us a right to apply for a flat or something? Well, why would I milk with it? Who said that look? <laughs> I just want even reply to him. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I want. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to be a strict mum. I'm. I'm not going to let him do what he wants because it's not right. And I want to know where he is and who he's with and what he's doing. But 
I'm not going to be like my mum. I'm not going to be boring. Why won't you just come? You will do, but it takes time. Um, I started this trip up. Yeah. I was really upset because you see things differently as a mum, don't you? You see things practically. I see what reality is going to look like for everybody. Whereas I think Leanne sees, you know, she sees a niceness, which, you know, I suppose it is a, it's a life. It's going to be a grand son for us, but which is lovely, but I just see things on more of a practical level and I just think, you know, I feel sort of kind of horrified about how things are going to change for everybody. If, if you really don't want to have an epidural, Leanne, then have diamorphine. Yeah, I'll do that. I do think she's underestimating me a bit. And I can, the only thing I can do is prove it when it happens. You're doing all right? I'm not. You are. Really You're happy. doing really well. I'm not. You are. I want him out now. We're going to get him out. We're going to get him out. Is that all right? <laughs> if you feel like pressure, yeah. just, if you feel pressure, just push a little bit and see what happens. <laughs> If you feel like pushing in your bottom, yeah, push. just... <laughs> Leanne, don't scream, hon. You're going to use all your energy screaming. Just push. Oh, please get it to stop. I don't want to do it anymore. You're about nine ah. centimetres. Wow. But it's hard to tell I because... I push. No, oh. let me... Let me... Leanne, you know when it's really painful, does it not hurt, help to just no, clamp your teeth? No, because I can't concentrate on it. What your mum's saying is good, it's just to put really your focus... Like, it's like you're gripping Laurie's hand. <laughs> that's your baby's head, that's all it is. Ah! All right, go on, home. I'm sure she'll be a good mum. I've, I've no doubt in that sense. I think it's just about her kind of... It's, it's everything else around it that goes with it that I hope, you know, she learns to sort of cope with that's it. That's sweet. Oh. Leanne, look at him. I just want to be happy and... I want him to be happy and having a good life and I just want in my own house with him, and whether I find somebody that wants to be involved, then that's what'll happen, but I'm not bothered about that at the moment. I'm bothered about making sure he's getting the best. Okay. Well, he needs to keep in his little towel, doesn't he? Cos I don't want to break He won't break. He's got hair stuck to him. I think for some women, Childbirth gives them a newfound confidence. It makes them a, a person in their own right. They've achieved something and they're somebody's mother now, you know, and, uh, and that's kind of a rite of passage, isn't it? And it gives them confidence in, in other areas of their life that actually I'm a, I'm a grown up. Yeah, you would know. Let me just try and get a nice one of him smile. Look at that face. Oh, he's pulling some real faces. I think some midwives do put extra pressure on themselves to undergo natural childbirth because others around us do so well that they almost have to em emulate the colleagues really and do as well as the colleagues have done, but everyone's different. Although Charlotte is a professional midwife and practices every day looking after women and knows the ins and outs of labor, at the end of the day, she's a woman that's not labored before knew straight away when I was working at the LGI that if I was to have a baby that's definitely where I'd go because I just trust my team mm. and I've got lots of friends and colleagues that'll hopefully <laughs> look after me. <laughs> this is exciting, this is the it's, day. It is, but the only thing is, have you got a torch on you? No, sorry. We'll go and get one. I'd like a really low risk water birth. As little intervention as possible the relief that you see on a woman as she steps into the pool. You can see her shoulders drop and everything just go. And so many of our women have water births and prove that actually you can do it with water. Coordinated! <laughs> You've almost got that excitement that, that they have, you know, that they've finally they've gone into labour. But then with that comes the worry that if something goes wrong, then you've got so much more to cope with because, because you work with them. I think so. We were never really going to find out the sex, were we? What was it the 20-week scan, wasn't it, where we, we could have found out? We, we sat there and we went in and, 
you know, Charlotte being a midwife, you would have thought that she'd have prepared herself and <laughs> drank plenty of water, but she hadn't. And then we had to go back out and Charlotte had to go and have uh, have some, some more water. So we were sat out there for another 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then we just asked the question to each other, shall we just find out now? We, uh, we decided, no, didn't we? And I'm really glad that we did now. I'm getting my bikini out. Yep. Oh. I'll show you where it is. I've always said to women, it makes you push better if you don't know. Yeah. So I thought I'll stick to my own motto yeah. that I say. Part of the midwife's job is majorly psychological and that's where you really have to work with them. You've got to keep them focused. But women are strong. We have babies because we're the stronger sex. If a man went through labour, he'd tell you every single contraction that he was having a contraction just in case you didn't know. Whereas a woman is far more likely to just get on with pain and just to, to find a way of coping and deal with it. So, the worst than I imagined. I was going to say, is it, what's it like? How... You just can't imagine it. Yeah. Do you ever get period pains? Yeah. Is I've it way it. worse than oh, that? Yeah. I don't think it's anything like it. Yeah. Because I always think, oh, I wonder what my period pains are like in comparison to <sighs> contractions. I really want to be able to experience it and feel it. And I've looked after it. A lot, a lot of women that have had epidurals and have had lovely births, but for me, I want to feel the pain. I really want to kind of see if it's going to make me a better, hopefully, midwife. Oh, beautiful. You OK now? I'm just going to I think we'll struggle to get her out. She said she's just been constantly having baths at home. Mm. That's it. I'm not to do this. Yes, you are. You're going to be brilliant. You're doing really well so far. You're doing fantastic. Once someone has began to lose sight of where things are going. You're right. You're right. Yeah. They can become really upset and lost. So you've got to help them get back on track. Yeah. Yeah, so don't worry. I do miss you. Yes, you, you can. can. You can. You've You're not doing... even started on any pain relief yet, have you? You're doing brilliant. I know you've had the water, but you're down. doing so well. I often get asked if I've had children and I have to admit I've, I've told the odd white lie and I've said, <laughs> yes, yes, I've done this. And then afterwards I have confessed. Um, I'm not saying that you have to have had children to be a good midwife. Try not to panic. You can do it, darling. Come on, Charlotte, you can do it. I think that to experience the pain and to be able to associate with that woman, it must help. What do you say to all your women? Such a long way to go, haven't I? Not necessarily. Your contractions have completely tailed off. No. God, I can't believe like how long it takes. <laughs> you know, we hear women don't we saying and we just What are you thinking? I'm a failure if I have an epidural. You're not a failure. You're not not to try dying law first, wouldn't I? I would try it first and then you can see whether you like it or not. If you don't, go the next step up. Yeah. So die morphine, please. Yeah. Good okay. Thank you. I think some midwives do put extra pressure on themselves to undergo natural childbirth because others around us do so well that they almost have to em emulate the colleagues, really, and do as well as the colleagues have done, but everyone's different. You cover me up, darling. Yep. Oh, God, there's no rest in this place. Hiya. Hello. <sighs> Although 
Charlotte is a professional midwife and practices every day looking after women and knows the ins and outs of labour. At the end of the day, she's a woman that's not laboured before. Seem to have perked up a little bit. Stay morphing. Thank you so much, Jim. You too, darling. Been so good. So are you. You're doing well. We'll get there. We'll be a family later on today, hopefully. Just think about making that phone call to your mum. Think about all the good things. James and I thought it was going to be a struggle for, for me to get pregnant. Um, I've got polycystic ovaries and I'd not had a period for, for several years, so uh, my GP and a lot of my colleagues had told me that I may well struggle. But we didn't actively try until after the wedding, so actually it only took us three months with a natural conception, so we did very, very well. I was very lucky. I don't know what she got! A girl! Oh, well done, you're amazing. I don't know if you want to see your Hello! Which way were you looking? You monkey. Jeez, oh, Charlotte, well done. Oh, She's a good size. Oh, Charlotte, well done. I love you so much. <laughs> Is she okay? She's fine. Oh, are you alright? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I think I thought I would know everything about labour, being a midwife, but actually when it came to it, I didn't have a clue. I just had to go with the flow and put my uttermost trust in Juliet and James. Oh, right. She did amazing. She did amazing. It was weird, wasn't it? Literally, like, fully rotated as it was delivering. So it's got a big lump on the side of its head. Her head. To be able to share that experience and to watch them as a little family at the end of the bed. Ooh, I'm getting emotional now. Ooh. I cried all the way home afterwards. <laughs> it's gone down a bit already. Yeah, we go down a lot. Hello. We'll put you a little hat on and we won't know. Nice it. long fingers. Like <laughs> right, Daddy. Oh. She's a really good size. She's perfect. So you don't think that it could happen to you. You don't believe it's going to happen to you until it's happened. Billy really didn't want to talk today because. Every time she mentions his name, she breaks down. She'll get upset. Everything will come out. Everything that she's stored in there will just burst out. We was just talking, and Billy turned around to me and just out of the blue, just said, what do you think your survival chances are? So that's how I hit home on me. Two and a half years we've been together, there's been a week where we've been apart. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> every See day. every day. So I found it hard to believe I'm going to be a father anyway. And now... We're in this... Ten this, weeks earlier. Ten weeks <laughs> earlier. I didn't know much about preeclampsia. I didn't know what caused it. Um, if you could get rid of it, or, you know, how it affected the baby, I just knew it was dangerous. Preeclampsia is a condition that affects pregnant women and initially the first symptoms really are high blood pressure. They get very, very puffy and also they'll probably start to produce a bit of protein in their urine. It can cause swelling on the brain, in which case you may go on to develop a potentially lethal problem called eclampsia. Then the only way to cure it is to deliver the baby in placenta. Let's come in, Ryan. Take your seat. Mm 
He seems a bit fed up, he's been knocked out at 30 <laughs> weeks, but other than that, he's... Good job, everybody. Is he alright? to help his lungs because he's born earlier. Yeah, yeah I mean, In a moment, I'm going to take him out to the intensive care unit, okay? Yeah. Ryan, do you want to have a quick look? There's your son. Look at his hair. So you don't think that it could happen to you. You don't believe it's going to happen to you until it's happened. You don't, because that's not normality. Tired. Mm -hmm. Overall, you'd be in hospital for a long time, you know that, don't you? Until he's due. When was your due date? 21st of October. You are. The beginning bit is where we do the intensive care. Yeah. That's the serious bit, yeah? Do x-rays, scan his brain, yeah. watch his kidneys, do all these things. But I do expect him to be fine. fine. It's not just a chance he'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? They're nearly all fine, are <laughs> Have you chosen a name yet? Cardi. C-O-D-Y. I was on a work placement. <clears throat> the day that I told them I was pregnant, they offered me a job. You all right? Come up in. No, I'm all right for now. You rang me and I says, can you ring me back because I'm eating? <laughs> so I was you know, there. Then she rang me back ten minutes later and I actually had a little bit of a go at her saying, I'm eating my food, will you leave me alone? Yeah. So, you know, when I actually rang and says, what's up? And she was crying down the phone to me. So I like, felt bad. Yeah. I knew that she sort of wanted to keep it, and I and she knew that I wanted to, but we none of us had the sort of like guts to say to each other, oh, "I want to keep it." Yeah. But for everyone else, we're actually wanting us to get rid. There were quite a few people that did. He's been here a lot longer before he comes out. All right. <laughs> Oh, okay. oh my gosh. Today is my birthday. <laughs> and I've held him for the first time. So that's the best thing ever. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So calm. Right. People do get different impressions from young people. And it's like, oh, you're 16, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. But they don't know us. Yeah. You can't judge someone on, you can't judge a book by its cover. You, you go there and there's so much going on and, you know, the, you're so overwhelmed by being happy. And, and then as soon as you walk out the door, it, Totally, just it's just gone. You do feel really guilty for leaving him there, but we don't have a choice. You know, if it was up to me, he'd come home today without machines, but it just can't happen. You come outside and there's someone there carrying their baby, taking him home. It's like the world's against you. Right. Yeah. I get up in the morning and. The hours seem to be so much longer, but when we're there, it's like so quick. So. Even though we're there, like all through the day, it still feels like we're missing out on a lot because he's not with us every minute of the day. 
and that's what normal parenthood is. I'm going to wait for now. I'm waiting, we've got a date in that bit, I'll do it. Yeah, we bath him and we change him and we're dressing him myself and we're doing everything like that, but we don't get to bring him home and have him in our environment and have him at our home. How long is it? Eight to one. The misconception that a lot of people have about premature babies, they just weigh a lot less. They don't realise the, the difficulty that these babies have with all their organs, you know, not just their lungs and their weight, but their gut, their, their heart, everything is so much more underformed. Billy didn't want to talk today because every time she mentions his name, she breaks down. She'll get upset. Everything will come out. Everything that she's stored in there will just burst out. We come in and we said to them, he doesn't seem himself. We could hear him wheezing a bit. We actually noticed that every time we touched him, moved the blanket, lifted him, or tried to wash him, or even just the slightest bit of noise, not a loud noise, he'd cry. They've X-rayed his lungs and they found a quite a severe chest infection. They've immediately reacted with antibiotics and he's been on them for five days and they only should be on them for two to three. There were one day we come in and it was they actually had to use a face mask, which is like a resuscitator, where they hand pump it. They had to use that on him. He's still got him. Billy's not caught that well. I mean, she's not eating properly. She's sort of down in dumps all the time. She doesn't want to do anything. All she wants to do is come here. All she goes on about is him, which it might sound bad, but that's 24-7. There's not any, I mean, everybody needs a bit of a time to escape an hour to forget it. Not forget him, but forget the whole situation. And she just does not let herself do that. We're here all day and I go in there for her. We was just talking and Billy turned around to me and just out of the blue just said, what do you think your survival chances are? So that sort of hit home on me, thinking, why are you thinking that? Because to me, he's 100%. I, don't, I think he's going to be fine. I really do honestly believe there's going to be nothing wrong with him. And we're going to look back and sort of give him a good kick in when he's a bit older. But tell him, you know, teach him a lesson. But she turned around to me and said that, and it was a bit of a shock. And I asked her what she meant, and Billy said, I don't think he's going to be right. I think everything's going to be wrong with him. What's up with you? Unless they dream. A clever boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. 